Hi hey guys, welcome to this episode of Kung Fu Report. On the last episode, I was demonstrating elbow and what to do if a guy blocks your elbow and how you do follow up. Uh, some of you emailed me and asked me what to do if the guy fires the other shot while you're doing your counter. Uh, what I want to say is, I can show you some techniques in those circumstance, but it's not about the techniques, it's about the limitation of the reaction time, right? So what do you do if the guy fires the other shot and you don't know what's coming? So that's what I want to talk about when we get back and also how it links up to other skill sets. Chris, please come on in, sir. Uh, this way. Yeah. So on the last episode, I demonstrated a bunch of elbows. I'm just going to take one example. If the guy blocks an elbow, usually they have to crisscross, make a cross. If they block like this, they're going to miss. So if I come at Chris like this, and he blocks it, then usually you can just attack. Like he blocks this way. Now I was demonstrating, you can just open up your hands. This is a memorizing technique. In this case, I did this. Now. When you do that, some of you have asked, like, yeah, okay, if you're here in a pox position now, after this movement, what happens if a guy fires a shot? How do you deal with it? I can show you some techniques, right? But the truth is, when you're actually here, when he fires a shot and he's going fast, I don't know if that's coming in this angle, this angle, this angle, this angle, this angle, or this angle. There's a bunch of angles, right? So for me to demonstrate a technique is actually not realistic. I would just be like, kind of lying a little bit because your reaction time, when you're this close to a guy, your ability to deflect the punch if he's a fast mover is not as easy as people think. So instead of trying to stop your shot if he fires it, if he's blocking and that ended up here, he tries to fire a shot, go fast, Chris, let's do it again. So from here, you're already occupying this line. Because you're occupying this line, when he tries to fire a shot, naturally, it doesn't matter what angle, he gets intercepted. So the idea is, once he gets intercepted, because you're already on that line, he's gonna slow down, because um, head trauma, right? So in order for him not to get intercepted or get slowed down, he would have to occupy his center, which triggers all the trapping. How, is, how would he stop this? <laughs> or stop it another way, or stop it another way. So that's why we trap. Not because it's fun to do or I want to do it, it's because if the guy's smart enough to occupy the line, now I have to do it, right? Right? But if he doesn't occupy the line and fires a fat shot from here, he just, look, he gets intercepted right away, right? Not because I'm quick, it's because I'm already there. So when we get back, I'll give you a solo tip on that. Thanks, Chris. All right, guys, today's solo tip. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate what Chris is. I threw an elbow, Chris stopped me. And then when I came out with a follow-up, when he throws another shot, the important thing is to intercept him to slow him down with shots. Instead of trying to like block punches out of the air because of the limitation of the reaction time, most humans' reaction time. So when you practice a simple technique, whether it's an elbow strike or a forearm strike, anything that's not your fist, or even a shoulder strike, make sure your next follow-up, whatever it is, occupies your center line. That way, whatever attack he throws, if he goes around, you hit, you beat him to the punch. And therefore, you slow him down, which means you checking his attack is going to be easy because it's easy to check a slow punch. It's not easy to check a really fast punch, right? When I say slow, it's relative. Slow, slowing down a little bit. It doesn't mean he goes dead slow, right? So, um, when you're doing a form like change, from here, when you turn it, you notice how your hand comes back out and then it goes into the arm breaks and then a palm strike. That's a very important concept. You never go in from one elbow and do a bunch. You can do that if you want, but it's better that whatever, anytime you throw an elbow, whatever comes up next should occupy your line. So that's something you should keep in mind when you train solo. Write it down if you have to. It's really, really important, right? And the next thing is, if the guy's smart enough to occupy your center, when you're throwing that elbow and you're coming through, if he occupies and blocks this, you're going through trapping mode, right? Like I demonstrated with Chris. That's one option. There's a lot of other things you can do. The important thing is when you're working on something, not to box it into a separate thing. Learn to link it together. So when I was throwing the elbow and I came in and Chris blocked, I'm actually going to trapping mode. So when you work on trapping, 
or not trapping, it doesn't matter. Link your stuff together when you're shadow boxing or when you're doing your forms. In fact, that's all over the form, like in Champion. Like I said, you go from elbows to block, from block to arm breaks, to arm breaks to palm strike. So it's different skill set linked together, but without any stoppage or thinking. That's another concept that you want to uh, keep in mind. So when you're training these things, link your stuff together, occupy your center. Remember those two things. And then the last thing I want to say is, uh, if you're interested in this kind of Wing Chun, we have a course level one and level two is coming up really soon on our website, anchenkungfu.com. See you there, see you next week.